Welcome back, viewers, for another edition of NFL Web TV. I'm your host, Samuel Zeno. I'm joined by Footy Ops manager Jared Carey and Fitzroy Stars captain Lionel Proctor. Thanks for joining us, Lionel. No worries. Good to have you in. Obviously, a big game coming up this week against Epping. Uh, disappointing loss against Layla on the weekend. Uh, what were your thoughts? Yeah, as you said, disappointing. We um, what we had the chance. Um, you know, it was a sort of a up and down game kind of thing. We um, the lead changed a few times, but most of the day, so we were on top. We were, I think, uh, three or four goals up in uh, the last quarter, fifteen minutes to go, and um, we sort of tried to go a bit too too defensive. So and it probably cost us in the end. I think. Mean. Actually, had a few people I know out at the game. They said the Layla Le- crowd was actually stunned during the final quarter when you kick the first two goals and you're up by about I think it was twenty seven points. Um, did you think you had them, or do you think the boys maybe got too far ahead of themselves, or was it just laying or just uh, a good fight back by them? Um, well, you got to you know give credit to Layla; they did fight back. We um, we probably let them in, you know, at times. We um, as I said, we went too defensive. Um, we sort of stopped attacking, which we played playing the football that got us in the uh, position we were, and we stopped doing that at times. And um, well, yeah, I mean to Layla's credit, they came back and got the four points in the end. Now, Jack, uh, we've heard around the traps you've had a reasonable start of the year personally. I think Samuel will be able to give us a couple of little stats. I've heard whispers that you've been playing some pretty good footy. Um, how have you seen your own form so far? Oh, I mean, the form's been okay, yeah. I've been pretty happy with it at the moment. But, um, I mean, it makes it a lot easier when you've got, you know, as, as you know, people know, we've got Andy Lovett there and uh, a few new boys, Richard uh, Bamblett, uh, Dave Keenan, so um, I mean, I've got to say, them boys are looking after me a bit, so Absolutely. which is good. You can probably give us some more well, detail. Is uh, in the coaches' players player of the year votes, you've actually polled eight out of a possible nine votes already this year, so that's uh, pretty impressive. It's just not good enough. Yeah. You need to, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, do it properly. You need to get all nine, mate. So, two yeah. best on, and the second best on. So you must be pretty uh, pretty happy with that. Yeah, as I said, yeah, pretty happy with that. But um, as long as it keeps up, mate. I'll, yeah. Andy Lovett, you mentioned uh, you mentioned him and, and Bam. What, what what sort of uh, impact have those sort of blokes had around the club this year? I imagine, look, speaking during the off season, you were pretty excited, and, and you said the whole club's just got a great vibe and, and, and great atmosphere. Is that still the case, even though you're one and two at the moment? It is, yeah. I mean, the whole atmosphere around the club is is pretty big at the moment. Um, obviously, Andy coming from where he was, you know, it brings a lot of professionalism and um, trains pretty hard. So the boys trying to get behind him and. Um, follow his lead kind of thing. And with Richard too, I mean, he, he's uh, played at North Ballarat Rebels now, I think, so yep. he's got a big work, e- work ethic and, uh, but, you know, he's going really well. And of course, you had the, uh, the winning round two against Hurstbridge, uh, probably followed by two losses, where you probably you could have pinched the game yourself. Obviously, the team score is going pretty well so far. I know you are one and two, but could have been three wins to start the year. Yeah, well... Our first game is oh, gone pretty Yeah, that, um, that was disappointing. I mean, we sort of got blown out of the water there. Um, Ten goals, which um, yeah, it was disappointing. But to bounce back against First Bridge, you know, we really needed to, to get the four points there. And as you said, yeah, we could have been yeah, two and one, which would have been looked a lot better. What happened at Diamond Creek? Uh, from the results we got in at quarter time, it was pretty close, and then they just blew you away in the second term, and you never probably re- um, regrouped after that. Was it just a poor effort, or was it more on uh, Diamond Creek's behalf? Um, yeah, they did blow us out of the water. I mean, we they've got that game plan where they go to their side. You know, as we all know, they go to their wing, and um, I mean, we knew that, but we still didn't get the uh, didn't get the players over there to. To stop that, um, just you know, pretty undisciplined at times. So yeah, it cost us pretty uh, dearly. It's, I think that's probably what was most impressive about your game on the weekend, Jack, because you you've got a reputation amongst the uh, the NFL as as not travelling real well. You, at, at home, you're you're a great side and, and you're really hard to beat on on, on big par. But the, the perception is that you don't travel real well. Is that something that's been addressed? And, and do you feel like you're halfway there just just from your performance against Lala on the weekend? Yeah, that's something that we're definitely working on. I mean, as you said, we're pretty dangerous at Vic Park on the uh, big open spaces, but um, the problem is going to other grounds and you know playing you know, playing our way, the uh, stars footy that you know that we like to play. So, I mean, that's been addressed and that's um, something we're working on and improving. In. We've got Epping this week, and 
I mean, you are at home, but they do have a big ground themselves, so they're probably going to be one of the teams who can familiarise themselves on your ground pretty quickly. Uh, what are you expecting from Epping? They've obviously had two losses first up and then had a big win against Mernda on the weekend. Uh, what do you make of their form? Um, well, we all, I mean, I think everyone thought they were going to be, you know, top three, top four. Obviously, yeah, they've had a couple of losses now, but we're expecting them to come out, you know, followed up and looking to beat us on our home ground. Um, as you said, they've got a big ground as well, so they're going to have plenty of run in their legs. So, um, yeah, I mean, we've just got to stick to our game plan and um, see how we go. Now, Jack, a, uh, a founding member of the, the Futuro Stars since the inception. So, 2008, uh, the Stars finished fifth in the uh, 14-team competition, Division 2. Missed out on a percentage, which was pretty disappointing towards the end there. 2009 equals sixth, uh, nine wins, nine losses. 2010, five wins, 13 losses, and uh, and finished sixth again. What's the pass mark for 2011? What, what have you set yourselves? Oh, definitely top four. Yep. Yeah, we're um, certainly aiming for that, and I think we've got the, um, the team to uh, you know reach them goals. Good. Uh, look, that's what I wanted to hear because I'd love to see you blokes in the finals. You're just so exciting to watch, and uh, I'd, I'd love to see you on the on you know, on the on Preston City Oval in that on that last Saturday, mate. Would be nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Jared mentioned the likes of Lovett and Bamblet coming through, but where else does the improvement have to come from aside from just getting some big recruits in? Where else do they have to improve to go from having six wins last year to actually being a finals contender in 2011? I think the main thing is the work ethic of the guys. Um, Last year, we, I mean, we, uh, it was virtually no pre-season. We, um, I think most guys started probably late January, you know. So um, that is the main improvement. We've had a big pre-season. We've probably, we got uh, Robbie Lynch uh, as a new fitness guy. He's the, um, he was the Australian 400 metre champion at one stage. So, and he's come across to us with, um, you know, he's worked as hard, he's put, you know, put the boys through their paces and it's sort of, we're reaping the rewards now. Yeah, terrific. Now, uh, Jack, I'm going to take you back a number of years now. Um, as an 18-year-old, you debuted for the Richmond Footy Club. That's a long time A long ago. time ago, yeah, absolutely making me feel old as well. Um, you played in, some, in front of some huge crowds for the Tigers because they were up and about at that stage. Yep. Uh, played all over Australia, SCG. The WACA grounds, Subiaco, uh, Gabba, Waverley, MCG. What were some of your highlights? Just uh, in your time, in, I think you spent four years at uh, down at Punt Road. What were some of the highlights uh, in those four years? Obviously, uh, it was pretty daunting first up and uh, getting down there and just you know, walking around with all the guys that you know, used to watch on TV, like Matty Knights, Wayne Campbell, Matty Richardson, guys like that. You know, it was a it was a big buzz. But um, the main highlight was. Um, my debut, which is at the uh, Gabba against Brisbane, round six. Um, you know, fairly parochial crowd there. We, um, well, I think we just got beat that game, actually. Mm. But that's definitely the main one. And also, uh, first goal, which is on Mother's Day. So, nice. I mean, second game, got the first goal at the MCG against Melbourne. You went so, on yourself on the sports bet, were you? you didn't get on no, the no, unfortunately, no. I think mum might have been, actually. But, <laughs> that's uh, a great Day present. Yeah, it was, and uh, she was wrapped, obviously. Yeah, so definitely. That's one of the, uh, the main memories, yeah. What was it like playing with Big Rich? Obviously, he's a, a big crowd favourite, but one who could probably give a, a bit of lip service to his own teammates. you ever get on the uh, receiving end of a big spray from Rich? Yeah, yeah, I did a couple of times. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the big valley. If you don't give him the ball, um, he does like to carry on a little bit. That's to be lace out, doesn't it, too? It does, yeah. But, um, you know, he demands the ball and he... So well, you don't give it to him, you're going to know about it. Yeah. I've got a little uh, little bit of a trivia uh, session here for you, Jack. Um, all right, you. Uh, how many games did you play? That's a pretty easy one. Twenty. Twenty. Spot on. Um, what number player were you to uh, to pull on the Richmond jumper in history? This is a big one. Oh, Toughy, yeah, it's mate, a real tough I would, one. I would, no, I would, uh, you, were, you almost got a milestone. You were the one thousand and second player to ever play for Richmond. Oh, okay. So if you had of uh, pulled your socks up a bit earlier, <laughs> you might have been the one thousand. <laughs> I don't know who beat you. How many free kicks did you give away? Give away in your time at uh, at Tigerland? I think there was a few actually. <laughs> it was. You've uh, you've answered it beautifully. Um, twenty games. Twenty games. Let's say about. 13? Yeah, 12, not bad, 12, not bad. So if you've given away 12, you might have got a few back yourself. How many free kicks did you get uh, given to you? 
Oh, I'd say about nine. Ah, four, oh, you're four. a fuck. Oh, well, well, you got four and you gave away twelve, so... Uh, Triple it, mate. I'll tell you what, fair dinkum. Mate, my son uh, must get a bit of a buzz going back and playing at Big Park as well. Probably one of the grounds that you probably... A few teams every year to go back in the ground with such history in the VFL and the AFL. Uh, it must be good to get back there. It is, yeah. I mean, I remember going to watch, because uh, I was the old Fitzroy supporter, so... Going down there and watching them play against Collingwood, you know, you could hardly move in there sometimes. So, but it's good to be back on the ground and, you know, playing footy there. Um, now, uh, 2008 League Best and Fairest, Jack. Um, that, I'd imagine that would have been one of your highlights of your career. It uh, did it mean a lot to you at the time, particularly in the Stars' first year. Yeah, it did. Yeah, as you said, our first year. So, you know, we wasn't really expecting uh, to win an award, any of us. So, we went along to uh, enjoy the night and... Just uh, scraped in at the end. Yeah, oh, it was a great count too. I think you won on in the last round. Wasn't yeah, it was. It? Yeah, from yeah. memory, yeah. Right. It was. A, it was a great night. Well, on current form, you might actually emulate uh, that that um, that feat if uh, the coaches' votes or anything to go by. You've also, also got uh, Simon McConnell down at at the Fitzroy Stars now. Sorry, he's still one of your high Uh How's he going? How's he his uh, rapport with the boys? Uh, it's probably quite a good figure to get down to a club. Oh, it is. Look, the boys love him. You know. He, Gets around, has a bit of a joke with the fellas, and um, yeah, obviously doing a lot of hard work behind the scenes. And um, we'd like to, uh, we're trying to get him to pull on a Guernsey again at some stage, <laughs> but uh, his knees are a bit sore at the moment, so um, we probably won't be able to. But no, he's going well. The boys love, the, love how, you know, having him around. Um, yeah, hopefully he's be there for a few more years. I saw him. Uh, I saw him play a reserves game last year out at Big Park, Big Sign, and uh, I actually thought he must have had lead in his boots because he did not move from the goal <laughs> square the whole time. No, no, he doesn't like getting too far away from the goal square. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Now, uh, just before we get rid of you, Jack, um, any uh, anything happening around the club? You mentioned there might be a couple of functions coming up uh, on the, in late May. Is there anything you want to pump up to all those star supporters out there? Yeah, look, one I can think of. Um, We've got an op shop night coming up on the 28th of, uh, of May. It's after our home game against Lower Plenty. So, look, yeah, I mean, uh, we're trying to get as much, as many as as we can. Um, if you can go out to an op shop and get in some good gear there, and uh, I think it's a $100 prize for the worst dress. So. Geez, I'll be a big chance of that. I'll just yeah. get a wardrobe yeah. at home. <laughs> might have to uh, lend some gear off. Yeah, absolutely, mate, absolutely. Well, there we have it, viewers. Uh, we thank. Uh, all that, we'll thank Lionel, pardon me, for joining us today. One of the true champions of the NFL competition. Get down uh, on Saturday to Victoria Park. It's Fitzroy Stars against Epping. Should be a beauty as both sides mm. try to get inside the top four for the first time this year. Uh, if you're not doing anything, get down and to all Fitzroy supporters, get along to uh, the night on May 28th. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.